Hello everybody, this is my um, deadly heavy metal filter right here and I'm going to show you how it works. So just like a regular old filter, you pour your water through, it has dirt in it or anything, and the filtration methods within the filter will uh, clean your water. Now mine is a deadly heavy metal filter. Now as you can see, I have charcoal, neodymium magnets, and carbon coated muscle shells really tightly compacted within there. Okay. For the charcoal, the purpose of them is they're already used as a really good source of uh, filtering and um, it's widely available all over Australia, even in our barbecues. So um, yeah, that's why I use that. The neodymium magnets are a really powerful little magnet uh, pull to them, so any um, metal traces in there uh, will hopefully get um, sucked to the magnet. Now the real good part about my one is um, the carbon coated muscle shells in the bottom really tightly compact over there and um, they uh, allow less dirt or anything that's in the water to just not even go through since it's so tightly compact um, yeah it's really gonna have a hard time for anything to get through there um, it's coated in carbon and that's just um, darkened sugar that's all I use for it and all it does is just um, it's a really good absorbent so anything in the water that's um, bad, it'll really just um, absorb it into the carbon. Thank you. Okay, the great importance of my project is that um, it's a really good filter overall. Um, it's been filtering out heavy metals and it's not really, um, uh, filtering out heavy metals isn't really an easy thing to do, but mine has proven to be very, very effective. And um, this could be really, really effective in third world countries as well, because water is very, very very important to life and um, if it's clear if it's um, cleaned out with um, my filter it could mean that um, our water could be widely available even in those countries and um, even in Australia um, the nitrate levels have been rising significantly in um, parts of the Kimberleys and um, if people are dying out there then uh, we need something to solve the problem even in my community especially the water is very it tastes really bitter and um, it's been making, it made one of my family members sick and um, this this um, filter could really, really benefit those communities and um, even the ones further out from major towns. So yes, um, really effective and can be widely available. Thank you. All people have a human right for safe drinking water and sanitation. In Rwanda, more than 40% of the total population don't have access to clean water. Around 44,000 Nepalese children under the age of five are dying every year from waterborne diseases. Floods can cause non-point source pollutants such as motor oil to wash directly into our very limited drinking water resources. Even trekkers in the Himalayas are at the highest risk in the world for waterborne diseases like Giardia and typhoid fever. But instead of resorting to non-recyclable plastic water bottles that take 450 years to degrade while leaching toxins into our waterways, effectively treating surface water, I think, is a much greener method in preventing waterborne diseases. In my investigation, I targeted a non-pathogenic, free-living, freshwater protozoan species called Paramecium chordatum, and I chose to test the efficacy of three commonly used water treatment techniques, chlorination, iodination, and electrochemical generation-based treatment. I used Aquatabs tablets, Coglans tablets, and MSR's Mix Oxidant Solution Purifier, which is a small device that allows for the on-site production of mixed oxidants. In my experiment, I decided to take optical density readings to quantify paramecium and conducted direct live cell counts to validate them. I found that the mixed oxidants purifier was the most effective on paramecium, resulting in a 99.9% .9 reduction of cells. From statistical MANOVA tests of my data, I deduced that these water disinfectants exhibit cytolytic activity, 
by creating turgor pressure, which ruptures the cell wall and leaks the protoplasmic contents, which in turn increases the optical density. I also found that lower temperatures require longer dwell times as it reduces the reactivity of antimicrobial compounds. And so hopefully in the future, big water technology companies can take this information into account and possibly implement a mixed oxidant solution from the electrolysis of a salt solution into their future products, as it definitely has a promising future as a safe and globally accessible water disinfectant.